hi guys welcome back so today we are studying about asthma uh, which is or C or COPD so definition asthma asthma is a chronic reversible airway inflammation characterized by periodic attacks of wheezing dyspnea chest tightness and coughing airways are hyper responsive to triggers antigens leading to acute obstructive symptoms by bronchoconstriction mucus plugs and increased inflammation this cannot be diagnosed at first presentation pulmonary function tests can be done starting at age 6 or when child is able to follow testing instructions peak flow meters are useful in the office and home for monitoring copd group of chronic progressive non-reversible lung diseases characterized by limited airflow with variable degrees of air sac enlargement and lung tissue obstruction destruction sorry emphysema and chronic bronchitis are the most common forms so asthma is the reversible form copd is the non-reversible changes of the obstructive lung diseases uh, differentiating copd from asthma age of onset COPD in the 60s, asthma any age, but 50% cases are diagnosed in children less than 10. So asthma is a disease of the children. Rule, role of smoking, more than 10 pack years. So packing, smoking for 10 years. Asthma, not casual, known trigger. Reversibility of airflow obstruction. Airflow obstruction is chronic and persistent. Airflow obstruction is episodic and usually reversible with therapy. Evolution, slow, progressive worsening with periodic exacerbation. Stable, episodic, less than 50% will outgrow. Hi history of allergy is infrequent. History of allergy is in more than 50%. Precipitators, environmental irritants like air pollution, cigarette smoking, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, viral infection, occupational exposure, firefighters, dusty jobs. An asthma, environmental irritants like dust or pollen, animal fur, cold air, exercise, URTIs, cigarette smoke, use of beta blocker, uh, ASA. Symptoms or signs, COPD, chronic cough, sputum, and or dyspnea. Asthma has wheeze, that is the hallmark symptom, dyspnea, chest tightness, prolonged expiration, cough which is worse in the cold, at night and in the early mornings. Diffusion capacity decreased, more so in pure emphysema. Normal for pure and it is normal for pure asthma. So diffusion capacity is the ability of oxygen to go from the air into the blood. So that is decreased in COPD and more in emphysema, whereas it is normal in asthma. Hypoxemia, chronic in advanced advanced stages. So there is a chronic hypoxemia and hypoxemia related. Um, uh, changes such as erythrocytemia, increased RBC, increased hemoglobin in COPD. Whereas in asthma, not usually present, episodic with severe attacks. Spirometry may have improvement with bronchodilators but are but not universally seen. Marked improvement with bronchodilators or steroids. Checks the x-ray, often normal, increase bronchial markings, chronic bronchitis and chronic hyperinflammation, emphysema, often coexist and bullae. Asthma, often normal or episodic hyperinflation, hyperinflation during asthma attacks. Management. All. Smoking cessation. Uh, then COPD has to be divided as mild, moderate, and severe. In mild, step one, salbutamol. Step two, short-acting bronco, 
I think bronchial and PRN plus long acting theotropium plus salmeterol. So SABA means short acting beta agonist. LAAC means long acting anticholinergic and LABA means long acting be, long acting uh, beta agonist moderate step 3 SABA SAMA plus LAMA LABA ok so this is difficult to understand like this so first step when someone comes in with COPD is that you give them salbutamol. If does not improve, then you can add a long-acting beta agonist theotropium, and you can, oh, oh sorry, salmetrol, and also long-acting anticholinergic agent like theotropium. If still does not improve, then I, I now above all these, you can add steroids. If still not, then this is a step four pneumococcal vaccination annual influenza immunization and in asthma also there is mild moderate severe ongoing patient education environmental control saba taken as rescue medication maintenance meds maintenance medications are low dose ics inhale corticosteroid Step 2 is medium or high dose inhaled corticosteroids or low dose inhaled corticosteroids plus long acting beta agonist LTRA. Look. And moderate is medium to high dose ICS, inhaled corticosteroids, plus either long acting beta agonist or leukotriene modifier. Severe immunotherapy, oral glucocorticosteroids, pneumococcal vaccination, influenza vaccination. So I did not like the way they have explained it here. It's very difficult to remember it. We'll have to go through this again. Expiratory flow volume curves, obstructive, normal, and restrictive disease. So this is the flow rate, this is the lung volume. Signs of poorly controlled asthma. Beta agonist use, that is beta agonist are uh, salbutamol, theotropium that use more than one month asthma related absence from work or school exercise induced asthma nighttime symptoms Th those are all poorly controlled asthma what color is your inhaler beta 2 agon is salbutamol ventolin light blue navy color salmeterol cerevent T light teal, turbutylene, uh, bricanil, blue and white, inhaled corticosteroids, fluticazone, fluvent, orange or peach, budisonite, palmicord, white or brown, white or brown. More about inhalers, aerosols, puffers equals to MDI, MDI plus spacer, meter dose inhaler should be used with spacers to reduce side effects, improve amount inhaled, increase efficiency of use, dry powder inhalers, discuss turbo heller and disc heller require fast and fast, fast breathing, may not be idle for children, nebulizations can be converged. Used to convert liquid medication into a fine mist. 
recommended to use uh, if a contraindications to meet a dose inhalers. Differential diagnosis of wheezing. So it's seen in allergies, anaphylaxis, asthma, reactive airway disease, GERD, infections like bronchitis, pneumonia, obstructive sleep apnea, COPD, less commonly congestive heart disease, foreign body, malignancy, cystic fibrosis, vocal cord dysfunction, etc. When prescribing salbutamol, watch out signs of hypokalemia. That is, lethargy, irritability, paresthesias, myalgias, weakness, palpitations, and uh, nausea, vomiting, polyuria. So this is very important. Signs of hypokalemia. What are they? They are lethargy, irritability, paresthesias, myalgias, weakness, palpitations, nausea, vomiting, and polyuria.